Hey, I'm here with another video for you and I'm going to talk about uh, miniatures again. Um, I think about miniatures a lot. I think that's uh, something to do with uh, my background uh, as a, a player of d and um, Got a little pal here who's decided to come and join me. Um, So miniatures uh, is something I think about quite a lot um, because, I mean, that was one of the first things I w really got into and got excited about uh, when I first found role-playing games. The Uber Miniatures Company was Citadel Miniatures, which was obviously part of Games Workshop and like pretty much everything I was seeing at the time was a uh, Games Workshop product. Um, most of the role-playing games were uh, British reprints uh, that were published by Games Workshop. I'm thinking about Middle Earth role playing, Stormbringer, um, I think Paranoia, possibly. Um, yeah, there was a ton of them. And Games Workshop and their uh, organ, White Dwarf, uh, like I say in the word organ, would pretty heavily push miniatures. You know, but obviously they made a lot of money out of their miniatures, even though, you know. I mean, I guess they weren't super expensive back then. Um, now, uh, obviously, I think a lot of people these days use um, Theatre of the Mind uh, to run their games, and I can totally understand that because, you know, it's easy. Um, but I like miniatures, and I think my players like miniatures, and it's it just has a little bit more of a sense of theatre to it. Um, it's got a little bit... Uh, tricky for people in recent years because they're so bloody expensive you know i mean have you seen metal miniatures recently that <laughs> they're super expensive and we used to pay like 195 for three and i think that was a lot of money but but even even the new plastic miniatures uh these days are uh, fairly pricey for what you're getting so, I mean, that could be a reason that a lot of people just don't even get into that now, and that's completely understandable. Um, I mean, D&D &D had its origins as a miniatures game. If you look at that first uh, uh, that first set, the what they call OD&D, &D, it doesn't mention the phrase role-playing game. It says it's a miniatures war game, and that's where all those guys came from, war gaming. And they were just using their... Uh, you know, Napoleonic War miniatures and medieval war miniatures to uh, run uh, fancy medieval uh, battles. Currently being attacked by a little creature. So I recently uh, started running Storm King's Thunder. Uh, now, if you watched my previous video, uh, I said something about Storm King's Thunder. Yeah, I wonder, see if you can remember what that was. I have absolutely no idea how to run this. I'm going to put in a wiggly wavy effect with a harp sound uh, just like in uh, old 70s TV to indicate that it's a flashback. Um, yeah, I said I had no uh, idea how to run that game. I was half joking when I said that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting adventure. Um, I think uh, the DM has to do a lot of work with that adventure, but um, yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to uh, it. I think it's uh, something where you don't necessarily know where it's going to go when you start. And I, you know, as I say, I just started running it for uh, a group of players. Yeah, I have no idea where it's going to go, and that's what's exciting about it. Um, I made a I made a video about Curse of Strahd, and you know, I. I loved my Curse of Strahd campaign. I thought it was brilliant. And I think that book is just absolutely fantastic. But ultimately, it's a very sort of closed situation. Um, you know, you go into Misty Horror World, you meet the ultimate villain, and uh, you go around Misty Horror World finding all the things you need to defeat him. And then you defeat him. Uh, and they call it, you know, it's a bit of a sandbox, but it's kind of a small closed sandbox. Storm King's Thunder is completely different. It's a huge sandbox and you can 
you know go off in all sorts of directions and I think it's going to require bringing in a lot of other uh, different things but if you're following the main quest of Storm King's Thunder then you're going to meet some giants spoiler alert you know it's 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 basically the update of Against the Giants which was uh, I think one of the very first D&D &D, uh, modules that was ever released. Uh, Against the Giants was uh, a compilation of three uh, earlier adventures and you can tell they were by Gary Gygax because the first one was called Steading of the Hill Giant Chief and the second one was called Glacial Rift of the Frost Giant Jarl. So Gary Gygax liked using, you know, obscure language uh, which I think gives early D&D &D a lot of its charm and, you know, that's kind of followed, carried through to D, D these days um so you're gonna fight giants right and one of the things that sort of gave me pause uh, when i got that adventure was well how the bloody hell am i going to run this with miniatures i don't have any giant miniatures um actually I've, I've got one which was from a very i think old citadel set and it's actually shorter than most of my uh, other miniatures um i think when citadel started doing uh, minis they were 25 millimeter scale I think in over the kind of space of you know a couple of years they've kind of worked the way up to kind of 35 millimeter scale like big big much bigger creatures um, so yeah I don't really have a, any giants so how am I gonna run this game I mean I guess I could use action figures I don't even have any action figures anymore got rid of them all I think a Rancor Keeper from uh, Return of the Jedi would have been perfect for a hill giant, but, uh, you know, you've got storm giants, you've got cloud giants. I mean, depending on what the players decide to do, spoiler alert, you know, you could fight any number of any of the tribes of giants that there are. You go out and you find all the uh, giant minis that uh, Wiz Kids and Wizards of the Coast put out and you get those and you put them into your game. You know, uh, if, if money is no ob object for you, then I'm happy for you. But for most of us, it is. Um, and those things cost some money, right? Uh, so what are some alternatives to go out and blowing all your money on uh, 25, 30 millimeter scale uh, giant miniatures? There are these things called Pathfinder Pawns, uh, which aren't in print anymore, but you can still find them. Um, big boxes full of uh, flat uh minis on printed on cardboard and these are actually like a lot of the things you used to get in the 80s when i got the um original middle earth role-playing game i spent a lot of my time playing middle earth role-playing game uh back in my teens um but the original box set came with a set of these things i don't think i ever used them because by that point i'd been seduced by you know painted metal miniatures from citadel um, I think the Judge Dread role-playing game came with some as well. And it was just a very kind of quick, easy, cheap way of getting a bunch of tokens to move around a board. Um, so, I mean, that is an option. Um, you're still going to be paying quite a bit of money, but you'll get a ton more for your money, obviously. I mean, they don't look as good, but, um, you know, perfectly serviceable at the table. Um, something else I've seen recently that I, th I think actually look even nicer are... Um, Arc Knight Games are putting out these, uh, it's on transparent uh, plastic, so you're literally just getting the shape of the mini, and uh, they look great, they look really, really good, um, and the, again, not cheap though, and especially if you're in this country, you'll, you're going to need to kind of pay through the nose shipping, um, but something I, I've, it's kind of niggling at me, uh, is uh, I think there's only about four or five giants in there. So you can buy this big set and you get hundreds of these things, but you might only get three or four things that you, you actually need to use. You're buying all this other stuff. So um, this this video is sort of solely to talk about um, some very unsexy D and D DM advice. And I know that's a that's a hotly contested title, but um, yeah, I'm gonna get totally unsexy here. My advice. Uh, to you if you're running Storm King's Thunder or, or any of these uh, pre-published adventures is to print your own minis. Um, so just get some light card, find some art on the internet, print it off um, 
and use those next to whatever midis that you'll be using it as i say super unsexy it's not exciting it's you know obviously we'd all rather have kind of gigantic storm giants uh, roaming around our tables but if that's not possible this is this is a kind of adequate solution i think you're never going to have the exact minis that you need if you're uh buying you know these these kind of big sets whether it's you know the D and D board games you get the kind of plastic minis in there or if you're buying you, you're finding a box of pathfinder pawns or the Ark Knight games uh uh, uh flat minis you know you will you will get a ton of them but you'll never get exactly what you want and if you're printing your own you will get exactly what you want um obviously mon monsters that you're fighting uh in combat you know they're not on the table for that long really uh maybe you know if it's a big combat maybe an hour but you know very rarely you know more than that um most combats would be over pretty quickly so to kind of put all that time and money into uh acquiring these kind of accurate uh 3d minis it's it's not really the best use of your time or money really unless you have a ton of money um so there you go i mean i did briefly think about getting some uh, fimo and modeling my own uh giant miniatures but i think the amount of time you still have to buy the stuff the amount of time of crafting it and painting it yeah i've got a lot of time on my hands at the moment because i've got no job but you know i still don't have uh unlimited time so that that's uh probably a non-starter i might i might make one just to see how it turns out um i mean it'd probably be horrendous so i'll never show it to anyone um so yeah, the, the the title of uh most unsexy D and D advice video is a hotly contested one. Um, I'm happy to bring you that. Uh, I'm sorry it couldn't be sexier. Um, you know, I don't know how many of these videos I'll make. I'm basically see myself as the poor man's Matt Colville. Um, I'm totally happy with that. If you watch these videos and just waiting for him to make a new one, that's what I do. You know uh so there you go if you use theater of the mind you you don't even have any of these issues but if you're kind of locked <laughs> into the mindset of having to use miniatures having to use something at the table then uh, i think printing your own uh flat miniature standees is the way to go so apparently it's just been uh, announced that there's a D&D &D movie, another D&D &D movie that's uh, going to be made by, I don't know, whoever is in bed with Hasbro. Um, so, you know, possibility for that is if it's successful and if they really push it hard in terms of merchandising, then there'll be Lego D&D. &D. I mean, if you can imagine Lego D&D, &D, um, well, I can totally imagine it because the first time I ever played D&D uh, &D as an adult after like a 25 year hiatus, um, we had a couple of my old miniatures, but um, uh, my friend had quite a large collection of Lego. And we actually used Le Lego minifigs. So I think there was a Jedi Chewbacca in there. But the great thing about Lego is it's customizable, right? So yeah, if there's going to be Lego D and D, all your miniatures uh, worries are sorted, because you can have exactly what you want, and you know you'll have some specific stuff like wizard hats. I mean, I guess you know there's Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings lego and you could use bits of those as well just build up your character you don't have to worry about you know heroes forge or any of those options you know you just build it all in lego it's pretty much the right scale for uh, tabletop stuff uh but apparently that isn't going to be out until 2021 so uh just something to something to bear in mind if you're uh, launching on a career uh buying lots and lots of uh, expensive miniatures maybe hold out for a couple of years and just get the Lego if the Lego happens, which I'm sure it will at some point. You just have to wait. 